British built motorhomes are rubbish. You cannot have a proper adventure with a British built motorhome. Wanna bet? Buying a motorhome can be stressful. You're about to invest a lot of money and you want to make sure that you don't buy a dud or a bad make or something that's gonna make you lose all of your hard earned cash. And then you go online and you do some research like a sensible person and you find forums and Facebook groups and whilst there are people there saying how much they love their particular brand, you get comments like this and this and this and you think, well, I'd, I'll just avoid all British motorhomes. And to be honest, it annoys me. I've traveled thousands of miles in my British built motorhome, and yet these comments still seem to exist. And I wanted to prove the haters wrong. So when Bailey of Bristol approached me and asked if I wanted to try out their new award-winning Adamo 69-4, Adamo, Adamo, eh, We'll see what comes out of my mouth as we go through this video. I wanted to do something a little bit different. Most fan reviews are for a day or two. Sometimes they keep them for a week. And don't get me wrong, the people who review these vans are fantastic and do a brilliant job at what they do. They will give you the stats and the tech and what it's like. But I wanted to use it as a consumer. If you were to take a Bailey of Bristol motorhome on a proper adventure for several weeks, how would it stand up? That's what I wanted to test. Now, Bailey are notorious for doing their own adventures. They've recently done the Sahara Challenge where they went down to Morocco. And before that, they did 21 countries in 21 days where they took a motorhome and a caravan all the way down to Turkey and back. So their motorhomes and caravans absolutely can stand up to adventures, but most of us don't travel in convoy. Most of us don't travel with other people who are highly technical minded and can fix problems on the road. Most of us, are like me, either on my own or traveling as a couple, not a huge amount of technical knowledge and a little bit nervous in case things go wrong because we don't know how to fix them. So how will one of their motorhomes stand up to a test like that? The next thing I wanted to do was take it somewhere challenging. I wanted to go somewhere with rugged terrain and different types of roads and different types of driving so that we could really give this motorhome a test for all of our needs. Like Iceland. It also meant that I had to drive the motorhome from the UK all the way up to Denmark to get to Iceland. And if you want to know more about how I actually got there, I've done a video all about the ferry and the costs and how that all worked. But right now we're talking about the van and how it's withstood the past five weeks because I've had the van now for five weeks. And I feel that I'm in a brilliant position to give you a proper review as a user. The bits I love, the bits that I would change or alter if this were my van, and the bits that I don't like so much. And I'll tell you why and how you can get around them if you're looking at this van for you. So grab a brew and let's dive in. If this camera stays up there, I'm going to be so impressed. It's kind of dangling from the headdress of the passenger seat at the moment. And I'm not sure how long this is going to stay, but let's try it. So let's start in the cab area where you're going to be spending a lot of time. And it's really important to make sure that this is right for you. So first thing that is very important is the seats are actually really, really comfortable, easy to adjust, plenty of room if you've got long legs. I'm 5'11 and not a problem at all. Standard right-hand drive on a Ford chassis. I'll put some more stats up here for those of you who like them, but let me talk about what it's like to actually drive this. I've driven nearly 5,000 miles in this thing over five weeks, so I tell you, I spent a lot of time in this area, and it's really comfortable and easy to use. So the first thing, apart from the right-hand drive and the Ford chassis, I wanted to talk about was the automatic gearbox. Now, I didn't think I'd like an automatic gearbox. I spend a lot of time in mountains and going up and down crazy mountain passes, and I wanted to be able to select my gears. This has been brilliant to the point that I'm really dreading going back to a manual gearbox. It's been so good. And I've taken up some crazy steep roads and down them as well. And it's been fantastic absolutely fantastic so i'm a huge fan on this automatic gearbox my next motorhome will be an automatic if it possibly can be and it's got so many pockets and drinks holders all right i'm gonna move this camera this could go horribly wrong but let's let's try and get this thing moving so what i really like is you've got one drinks holder here so you can put your coffee or whatever your mug and then down here you've got a pocket so you can put like a big bottle of water in there you've also got loads of pockets 
along the top up here. I use that for all my sort of GoPro bits. Obviously, I don't use that. This is a spare phone holder. I put my main phone holder on here. Tom Tom goes in there, and at the back, they've got a socket so you can put your chargers for things like your sat nav and your phone charger. Also, a good place for sunglasses. In fact, talking about sunglasses, they've also got extra pockets up here. So, I've got a spare pair of sunglasses in that little pocket and they've got a further shelf up here which i will talk about shortly other cool things is the radio is really easy it's ford so it works really well with connecting your phone up the aircon is brilliant this is the automatic start and stop so that you can save some fuel when you're in traffic and stuff on the steering wheel you've got things like your cruise control setup i don't really use that um, and things for the music and for phone calls and then down here can you see that yes you can you've got the automatic change for your wing mirrors which are huge really really good visibility with the wing mirrors which is so important and then you've got all your different settings for your lights and everything one thing i would definitely change if this was my motorhome would be the rear view camera now it's fine and it does the job but it only switches on when you're reversing and i'm used to being able to look out my rear view camera when I'm driving, so like if a, a motorbike has pulled in behind me to take advantage of the shelter from the rain or something, I want to know that he's there so I know not to slam on or anything like that. So I like being able to see what's going on behind me whilst I'm driving. The other thing I don't like is it's only got one single viewpoint so it only sees backwards. When you're trying to reverse into a spot on a campsite or an air or even just a normal parking place, you want to be able to look down, you know, where the little white pegs are, you want to see where the little white pegs are and you can't with this and I've really missed that. So I would definitely upgrade the rear view camera to being a dual view system that is on all the time whilst the engine is in operation. What else haven't I spoken about? So it's got the sliding bits here for the, uh, the front, which is really cool. But honestly, I've been using these cushions and they come all the way around just around the front of the uh, the area and that's been keeping it nice and warm so that's been great the front chairs do swivel around i've not actually bothered to do it because there's been so much other space one thing i do want to talk about is this amazing shelf i love it as you can see i've got all sorts of things up here um like torches and my sewing kit and random bits and some paperwork and magazines and it's just a really really handy space to keep things and you've also got two pockets on either side as well where you can keep stuff now for those of you who follow me on instagram you might have seen that we had a bit of an issue with the sunroof when i first picked the van up and was driving down it actually blew open and it scared the bejesus out of me um what we think happened and to be fair to bailey it's not their fault is the previous user of this motorhome because don't forget this is a press motorhome so lots of people have been using this and testing it we think they didn't shut the sunroof properly because it's been fixed and I've not had an issue since. So it's absolutely fine. I've driven God knows how many miles with it. It's been brilliant. So yeah, although it did scare me, I don't really think we can blame that on Bailey because it's been fine. I'm really impressed with the cab area. I think it's fantastic. With the exception of the rear view camera, there's nothing I would change on it. So let's give it a nine out of 10. So here's the living space when the table has been unfolded. You've got an enormous window on this side, an enormous window on this side. You can easily seat, easily three people on that side. And I can almost lie down on this. It's probably, I don't know, maybe about five, eight on this side. So you can probably seat four people quite happily on there. The table is great because it slides. So you can slide it sort of as you need it. And then obviously I just unfolded it and it's got like a pull out bar bit so that you can see it. if I zoom out slightly here you go you can see it all in its entirety now like I said those two front chairs they do swivel around I won't bother to do it you know that they have a swivel on them and also under here and under here these convert up to traveling seats now obviously I've not done this because I don't need to it's just me so I will put some photos in here of what it looks like from the Bailey configuration one thing to remember is that because that's a chair and that's a chair you've lost that storage but you do have underneath here you've got a little locker under there and one on the other side under here I have got my hoover and I've got some of the leads and I also put my EcoFlow under there when it's not in use but it's out at the moment and then on that one under there I've just been using for shoes obviously but that's the storage under there so that's been quite useful and if i owned this van i'd probably keep dog food under one of those so that i can get access to it fairly easy 
So let's talk about the bed. Let me zoom out again so you can see it properly. So as you can see, it's an electric drop down bed. The thing I love about it is you can leave it made up like this. You just need to move the pillow so that they lay out flat and then it goes up into the ceiling and I've still got space to walk underneath it and I'm 5'11". Most drop down beds, you don't have that. I don't have that in my van, it's brilliant. Now this is the halfway point. So as you can see, there are ladder points here. The bed does also drop all the way down so it's lying on the seat. What you've got to remember to do with that though, of course, is you've got to make sure that you drop the table, which is also electric. So you drop the table using this switch here and that, if I press it and drops down, you've got to remember to move it away from there as well. But I'll be honest, I found that a bit of a faff because it was just me and it meant that I could leave all the stuff on there. So I've been sleeping on the bed like this. And I tell you what, the bed is so comfortable. Possibly the most comfortable motorhome bed I've ever stayed in. It's just on a proper spring, there goes my earplugs, just on a proper normal mattress base. It's not even that thick. It's so comfy. I want to take it home with me. It's brilliant. And then when you put the bed up, it's got lights in the bottom of the bed. Let me put it up now and I can show you. So all you do is you lay out the pillows so that the bed goes up high enough. Left the duvet on there, left my blankets on there, left everything else exactly as it is and just press the button in the side up there and it just glides up effortlessly. And I'm going to swing the, uh, the camera around in a minute when it's up. So it's kind of level there, but if you press it again, it goes up a little bit further, which is useful. And then you've easily, if you're six foot, you've got headroom underneath here. A little bit taller than that, you might struggle, but you're gonna struggle in most motorhomes with the drop down bed. I struggle in most motorhomes. I haven't got this much headroom underneath it. So this is really great. I don't even have to think about it, it's fab. Now, having said all of that, the electric drop down bed is possibly one of my deal breakers because I swore I would never have another one. My hair's getting in the microphone. The reason for that is simple. Because I like to spend an awful lot of my time off grid, so wild camping, wild parking, whatever you want to call it, I don't always have an electric hookup. And having an electric drop down bed takes a ridiculous amount of battery power. And even though I have been on campsites for most of this trip because Iceland does not allow wild camping, wild parking, I still don't like the fact that I need to be connected to electrical power to make sure I've got enough power for the drop down bed. Now, it's not a complete deal breaker because what I would potentially do if I owned this motorhome is I would definitely upgrade the system to a lithium battery anyway, probably put another solar panel on, but it's just something to be mindful of. Like if you lower and raise the bed several times a day, like if you're a fan like me of a good afternoon nap then you're putting the bed up to four times a day that's a lot of electrical power and you're probably not going to get that back from a solar panel so that's when you might start thinking about investing in perhaps a second battery a bigger battery all of these things are just something to think about and that's why it's really really important to disregard a blanket statement like all oh, this doesn't work or all electric drop down beds are bad because they're not if you are the kind of person who likes to be in campsites and always has electric hookup then they're brilliant as you've just seen it's so much easier than having a manual bed but just bear in mind how you're going to use the motorhome because that will be a consideration that's definitely something to bear in mind for me because i like to be off grid so much Oh, one thing I completely forgot to mention, I've got shelves next to the bed and these little night reading lights, which are really, really useful, so useful. So they've been great. I forgot to talk about this. So the living space, I love. I absolutely love it. The only thing that I have a little, and we're talking little nitpick now, because of the way the layout is, there's not really anywhere to stretch out like properly and have a good nap. So you'd have to drop the bed down, which is okay. But if you're like me and you work from your van, then you've got to clear the decks, clear everything, which is why I started sleeping with the bed halfway down. Um, so you can get away with doing that, but obviously that uses a lot of electrical power. So purely for the lack of napping space, if you are a big lump like me, I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 on the living room, but I just, I love the space and the light. It's magic. The bed, ah, oh, you see again, I don't think I can give it a 10 because it's electric. I'm gonna have to give it a nine, but that's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite picky about my bed and it, the mattress. Maybe let's give it a nine and a half. I can't keep deducting points because it's electric. <laughs> um, but the bed is so comfortable, so comfortable. Now I'm just gonna interrupt myself here by saying something really important. My opinion 
is just that. It's my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong. I live in motorhomes. I work with motorhomes. I do things involving motorhomes all the time. So I like to think I have a fair amount of knowledge about what works for motorhomes to live in or travel in, certainly for an extended period of time. But I am me. I travel now mostly on my own with my dog, although he's not here at the moment. And my opinion is based on what works for me from someone who lives in the van and works in the van. If you travel as a couple, you'll have a different requirement. If you are somebody who likes to go to campsites and have electric hookups, you'll have different requirements. Someone like me who likes to go off grid a lot. If you are a couple who take their kids or their grandkids away for weekends and just wants a fun space to hang out in, then you will have different requirements too. So I will give you the pros and cons, but they're based on me. So take what I say, apply that to your own requirement, and then you can get a more informed formed decision. So moving on to the kitchen area and I know I've zoomed out on here so you can see it all so let me zoom in so you can see it in real size. Uh, I know a lot of people like to see where people put their storage and stuff for the kitchen so let me go through this with you. So first up you've got a sink and a so-so area but what you have got on here is an extra bit of workspace so that's really good so when I'm washing up I put that up and then I can use that for my drying rack and you've got plenty of space then for preparing food and everything else which is really really helpful then up here you have got four cupboards now let me show you what I've done in here so plates and bowls are stacked when I've got paper plates between them to stop them all rattling and um, this is this is kind of my snack cupboard don't judge me um, I have put in random these are plastic wine glasses that I got because my Silway ones that I love um, you need the magnetic strip to make them last so I haven't got those with me up here I've got uh, plastic cups and tea and coffee this is my amazing coffee mug with a cute wandering bird sticker on but this thing is fantastic keeps things warm for hours the best hot chocolate in the world i'm addicted to this stuff it's brilliant and then behind that i've just got drinks and stuff if i owned this i would get a couple of stackable boxes here and probably another one here as well like this and that would keep everything way more organized but i didn't want to buy a load of boxes just for a few weeks so it is kind of puddled in but nothing rattles nothing moves it's great so that's that cupboard and that's what i've been using that for this cupboard is a little bit more organized um th this was my crisp and more snacks but i'm sad to say it's quite empty now uh, this is bread so i've got all these part baked bread rolls if i need it and a fresh loaf there and then in here I've got all my dried stuff so I've got cereal and I've got my pasta and then up here I've got my teeny tiny electric kettle that I don't normally carry but actually it's been brilliant because I have been on campsites all the time and needed electric hookup I have been using my electric kettle which has been saving on gas because gas is something that I was worried about getting in Iceland so that's been really helpful so up here has been kind of tinned and dry food loads of storage in there then you've got the oven so you've got three gas burners and then one electric plate which i haven't actually used all that much given how much electric i've been having uh, in here you've got a grill which i've not used at all because i use my ridge monkey but i have used my oven and to be fair i've been traveling with these in and it hasn't rattled all that much which has been quite nice under here I've got my air fryer I love this air fryer it's brilliant and I've got some like trays and chopping boards and stuff here I've got my collapsible saucepans and I've got my ridge monkey and at the back oh I've just got bowls and measuring jugs and things in there which has been good and underneath the oven they've got this really great little cupboard and that's where all of my cleaning stuff and my washing tablets for laundry and stuff that's where all of that has gone on the other side we have got let me zoom out again with fridge freezer let me show you inside it's a three-way fridge freezer so it works off at the moment i'm on electric but it also works off gas and it works off battery when you're driving in here you've got a really good size freezer compartment which has got curly fries in it at the moment and then down here i haven't got a huge amount of food in here because i'm getting on the ferry later and i've got to turn the gas off for a couple of days so there's no point in buying a lot of perishable stuff one thing i love is this drawer i've not seen anything like this before but it's got all your bottles in there and a red pepper randomly uh, but things like your milk and everything is all stacked in here so it's not taking up space elsewhere that's been brilliant and then i have a lot of confectionery in the cupboard but this fridge freezer has been fantastic and then at the top i've got a little cupboard which is where i put bags and some cans and stuff 
in there. They have got a TV bracket here that I don't use. And then they've got a couple of really nice little pockets here. One has got my slippers in and they've got a little box there where I'm putting all my receipts. And then under there, you could put, uh, you put all sorts of stuff in there. So that's the kitchen. There's not a huge amount that I would change on the kitchen. One thing that they haven't got is space for like tins, lo loads of food if you're going traveling. Um, so I've had to put that in the garage, which I will show you shortly. But I think for that, let me zoom in again so that you're not seeing it all in a zoomed out fashion. Um, I would give it, eh, let's give it an eight out of 10. So they've got the Truma system set up here, works like every other Truma. I've got the hot water on at the moment and it works off either your gas or your electric. Plenty of plugs, which I like. And I also really like that on the light, you've got little USB things. Those are so, so useful. Okay, moving on to one of my favorite areas of the motorhome, we've got the bathroom. So you've got a toilet there with plenty of room for your legs when you need it. You've got a sink, you've got a mirror that's got a really, really, hello, handy cupboard beneath it with all of my toiletries and stuff in it, which is great. Uh, a frosted mirror, which is useful. A uh, huge big mirror here, which is also a wardrobe. I'll talk about that shortly. And the shower, which is magic. Now, it's really easy to use. It's got double plugs, which is so, so useful. I'm going to talk to you in the mirror here. So useful because when you're at an angle or something, you, the water drains out of one or doesn't drain out the other. So having two, brilliant, brilliant idea. Now, talking about here, wardrobe. Now, honesty time. Let me turn the light on so you can actually see. It's brilliant. There are a couple of things that I would do if it was my mode home. Now, the first time I used it on a bumpy road, all of these fell down. They all jumped off the rail and were just in a big heap. So one thing I've been doing, uh, let me get the camera, is I've been hanging them on backwards. So this is the back of the van. So I've been hanging the hook on from the back and they've not fallen off since. But what I would do if it was my van is you can get these hooks with like the extra bits. So if I unhook that, you get a bit that comes down here. So it like locks it in place. Um, and I would get that, which would be really useful. The other thing that I would get would be some kind of strut or support to stop things falling off the shelves because they do fall off the shelves when you go over bumpy road. Not on normal motorways or normal paved roads, I should stress, but I've been going down an awful lot of gravel roads and things have jumped and bounced and things have moved around. I would also invest in more boxes like this so that I could stack stuff uh, rather than it being just loose and a bit higgledy-piggledy. But otherwise, it's such a brilliant space and the nice thing is when you come out that, that creaks so let me shut those but when you come out of the shower and you've got the door closed you've got this enormous dressing area enormous it's brilliant and because I know some of you have asked can I do the funky chicken in here not this way not properly but if you go sideways yes you can funky chicken in the bathroom so it's good, but it's just this bit, this bit's brilliant. Like having a proper dressing area, and then you've got your wardrobe here and stuff. Especially like me when you live in your van or you're gonna to be touring for a long time. Oh, it's so good. It's so, so well laid out. I love that. You've also got a, uh, a really useful, if I undo it, a really useful access point into your garage. But I'll take you outside and show you more about that in a minute. But for this area, I'm not sure you can fault it. I, I mean, I put a couple of extra hooks up. I, I think I'm going to have to give it a 10. I think I think I am going to have to give it a 10. It's brilliant and I love it. Hello, welcome outside. It's, uh, it's quite a nice day. So let me walk you around the outside. Now, I will warn you, I've had this van now for four and a half weeks. We have done about four and a half thousand miles. It is not clean. Um, it will be clean before I give it back to Bailey because it's manky. But I wanted to show you that I have actually used it. It's not just come out of a showroom and uh, yeah, it's a bit manky. But um, I've warned you now, so here we go. So that's one garage drawer, which we'll talk about. But one thing I wanted to draw your attention to is the water fill up. So it has got one of these really different water filling things, which is great, but most campsites like where I am now they only provide a hose you can't put your own hose on it it's a bit properly locked on hose so you can't use this which means that you've got to run the hose into your van and fill up your water tank it's not the end of the world but it's a little bit annoying talking about another thing that's a little bit annoying is the electric cable is right by your front door 
So it's fine like now because I've run it around the front of the van, but if you wanted to go say on a normal campsite, you'd run the electric cable, it would be in front of your door. Now you can push it underneath, which is what I've done. And I have to say in all fairness, I've not fallen over it yet, but it's just something to think about. And it's a really weird place to put it. So if I was designing my own motorhome, I wouldn't put it there, but it works. I am being a really nitpicky now. So here we go. This is the garage space full of, quite frankly, lots of stuff that I thought I would need in Iceland and I haven't. Let me zoom out again so that you can see it all better. Now, if this were my van, I would have stacks of drawers here and I'd have hooks for things like the electric cable and the water hose. And I would have extra like a storage space for kitchen rolls stuff and I'd probably this is a whole bag of clothes um, I would probably have that so that it was all stacked up nice and neatly under here that's the water tank access so you can just literally unscrew that blue tap and fill it in there and then they've got a really convenient little shelf here for random stuff occasionally I've had to use this to fill up the water tank as well if the hose hasn't reached or whatever and they've got a power socket back here which is really helpful this space is brilliant they've got a little light here now one thing I will say is when you're trying to get access to it from inside, like um, when I'm trying to be lazy and trying to reach the kitchen rolls or whatever, and um, you can't reach this light. So I would try and put a little light or something by that hatch so that you could see what you're doing. And then on the other side, I'm being lazy, but you can see, oh, okay, no, all right. I'm walking around, I'm walking around. I wasn't kidding about it being manky. Look at the state of that. <laughs> My post about how to clean a motorhome is gonna come in very handy. I do like the double locks that they've got in here. They're great, but if it was my van again, I would put an external lock on there as well. So now here we are in the other side of the van. And the thing that I really like is it's got an enormous rail here for like if you're hanging wetsuits or whatever. It's got a little shelf here, which is nice in theory, but frankly, I don't know what you're gonna put on there that's gonna stay put whilst you're driving. But again, you know, I've just, honestly, I've just kind of thrown stuff in. Now, this was the water hose that I was trying to show you. So that is the water hose that you need, and it just clips in. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it fills up fine, but if I was designing my van again, I wouldn't put one of those in. But this is the garage, and it's lovely. I've really, really, really liked having a dumping ground but it's not particularly well organized. So again, I would invest in proper shelving or something for the garage to keep it better organized. But I do like having a space to hang wet stuff, especially if you're like a surfer or a kayaker or whatever, and you want to make use of beautiful places like this, then yeah, having somewhere to hang stuff is fantastic. And you can also put bicycles in here as well. Obviously not when you've got this amount of rubbish in there, but it's just a really, really lovely space. The other thing I like whilst we are outside is the overhang. Now you've got to be really careful with an overhang this big, especially when you've got a garage, because that is an awful, awful lot of weight. If you imagine you've got the garage and then above that, you've got that cupboard, that huge wardrobe. So that is a huge amount of weight all on your rear axle. So although it means that you can fit into a fairly small space and you've just got a bit of an overhang if you find a right spot over a pavement or a grassy bit or something, you do need to make sure you're not overloading your rear axle too much. So make sure you go to a waybridge when you are all loaded up and make sure you've got it right. But it is nice having that slightly longer overhang. It means you can get into better spots when you're trying to park and you don't stick out quite so far, which has been really helpful. Uh, gas locker, just standard gas locker, it takes two six kilogram gas bottles. I think you could probably get two 13, two bigger bottles in there as well. Oh Lord, the bells are back. We were doing so well. We were doing so well. I've come to hide inside from the bells in the hope that we can finish this video before they get too loud. So how would I grade the garage? It's difficult because I've not had a garage before and I don't really know what else I'd expect from a garage. It's a big space. It's not particularly well organized, but that's my fault, not Bailey's fault. Um, and I like having a garage. I really, really like having the garage. I would obviously have to invest in some drawers or some extra storage spaces. And I would like a light. I'm being really nitpicky now, aren't I? But I'd like a light so that I can see it from this side rather than having to go outside. I think I'm gonna give it a nine purely just because yeah, they should have it all stored for me. I'm being a bit unfair with that. I do feel like I'm being a bit unfair with that, but I'm gonna stick with my nine and, uh, and give it that anyway. And the outside, I'm taking two points off, one for the hose and one for the electric cable place because it's just silly. It could be on the other side or whatever. Um, so that's getting an eight out of 10, although she's a really nice looking van.
I, I think she's great. She looks rugged. She looks like she could have the adventure. She also looks manky, but you know, we're not gonna discuss that. Don't forget, if you are looking to buy or upgrade your motorhome, you can grab your free buyer's checklist. The link is in the notes, and that will help give you a whole list of things to remember to look at when you're going to look around different vans. And also you've got a decision matrix on there so you can follow that through and get the best van for you. So the Bailey Adamo, who do I think it's perfect for? I don't quite see how you're going to get four people in this van for an extended period of time. It's brilliant for one. It would be absolutely fine for two. I think for, although I do know somebody who took their family, like their two girls and their wife and them, when in this exact van, they went motorhome skiing in it and they had a brilliant time. So it can be done. But me personally, I think, oh no, I, I need my own space too much for that. I, that's too, too close to people uh, when they're sleeping underneath each other. So I think this van is perfect for couples uh, or those who take their kids or their grandkids away occasionally. Thank you very much to Bailey for sponsoring this trip to Iceland and lending me this motorhome for five weeks so I can give it a proper test. And if you've enjoyed the video and want to see more about Iceland and what it's like to take a motorhome around Iceland, this is the playlist for you. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.